On the show in wheel spin, we drive the Mercedes Benz CLA 45 AMG. In wheel spin, we drive the new Volkswagen Polo. And on the track, we bring you the action from the Jeketa National Championship Round 2. It seems that Mercedes-Benz in India is very, very serious about their brand image. They want to tell you that their brand signifies excitement, power and a huge snob value which other German manufacturers might not be able to offer. So the game plan is very simple here. They offer you models which are absolutely top of the line and often come with this respected badging here, the AMG. And to a petrol head like me, what it means is simple, complete fun. Mercedes-Benz India in recent times has added the AMG-powered cars to practically their entire lineup to offer their customers a more spirited performance option. And they claim that their customers like this. So now they are bringing in the AMG trims first, like in this CLA 45. And the latest to join the stable is the CLA 45 here, of course, with the AMG badging. And this car is supposed to provide an alternative to all those customers who are looking for a small sedan, but one that reeks of luxury and brand value. And you know what? This might just have worked, but it won't. Because this AMG badging makes sure that the CLA 45 is exorbitantly priced. And this would put this car only in the domain of the rich and the famous. But then possibly Mercedes intended it to be just that way. The CLA 45 measures in at 4.6 meters, but the wheelbase is just under 2.7 meters, which actually makes it as roomy as say a Honda City or a Fiat Linea. In fact, both these mid-size compacts have more boot space than the CLA. Backseat space or big boot is certainly not the strength of this CLA. cramped interiors for sure and you don't really have to be 6 feet 4 to feel this. Open the boot and you'll be surprised at the space it offers. Less than even some of the smaller sedans. Stick in a donut and it gets real tight. Okay, the driver's seat. If you don't have a monster sitting in the back seat, you can then slide the seat a little back using this electric switch located on the door, typical Mercedes way, and be comfortable. But this is where I'm going to close my gripe register. I must be some kind of a chicken farmer to look at a car like this. The end of the day, this is a beautiful car. It's powered by AMG and it's meant for fun motoring, not for practicalities, not for space. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Take this car to its natural habitat. If a car has AMG plastered all over it, then it just means one thing, that we must take her to a racetrack to find out what it really means. And this CLA 45 AMG just seems the right candidate to be on a racetrack. Mercedes claims that this is the most powerful four-cylinder series production engine. And incidentally, this is also the first time that you see a four-cylinder AMG car. This is a two-liter turbocharged petrol engine which belts out about 360 brake horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque. And if you put it on the straight on this boot circuit here, you can see the juices flying. I'm hitting well over 200 kilometers an hour. It's about 220, going to 230, and now it's time for me to brake. And boy, this car really brakes, brakes very, very hard. It also has a three-stage ESP, so you are protected quite well in case you brake really, really late. Actually, it's a lot of fun flinging this car around the track. This is fast, this is agile, and this is really a compact car. 
the power gets driven to the wheel which has the traction so it grips the road very very well indeed. It just corners brilliantly. All you have to do with this car is place it on the racing line, floor the gas pedal and then lift off at the corner and this grips the road very very well. A bit of opposite lock and you are out. Okay, if you pay so much money for a car, then it has to be good. And how good is this CLA AMG 45? You really find out when you are on a racetrack and you are putting her hard through the corners. This is real fun. And on this trade, I am doing again about 180 kilometers before I come down to the first corner. And the braking is very, very effective. It brakes really well. And then if you slide her, you don't need to... Ah! This is good fun. Inside the car, everything is very sporty. The steering is flat bottom just to add to that touch and make you feel that you're driving a genuine sports car. It gives you three driving modes. You can put it on the sport, you can put it on the manual, and of course for city driving, you can put it on the eco mode. And on the racetrack, if you really want to play a race car driver, then all you have to do is press this little button here and the transmission immediately shifts to the sports mode. And you can feel the difference. The power flow becomes much more linear, the car starts gripping the corners very, very well, and even a tricky corner like the double FX in the parabola seems like a child's play. If you're going to buy this car, then I'm going to seriously advise you that find the free weekend and put this car on the track here and you will see what it really means. It's really great fun to drive an AMG powered car on a proper racetrack. Now that I know what kind of performance she is capable of on the racetrack, it's time for me to peep inside and see what she offers me. And what I see at first glance should really impresses me. Hand stitch quality leather with red pipings on it, brushed aluminum fascia, great sounding sound system here, a nice large TFT display, a large panoramic roof and red seat belts to boot. In fact, she is loaded. End of the day, make no mistake, this is also a Mercedes and you are not going to get short change if you buy this in terms of either comfort or luxury. Everything inside this CLA screams performance, which includes the paddle shift gears for fast gear changing or even the seats which are sculpted like proper race car seats with side supports. In fact, you can even adjust the bolstering depending on how fast you are cornering or how tightly you want the seats to hug you. It is these small attention to details which makes the CLA so very enjoyable. The best part about the CLA 45 is that you can live with this car on an everyday basis. Four seats, four doors, all creature comforts, a power band which is extremely linear and tractable in city traffic and coupled with an automatic this is a car you can drive to work on a regular basis. The only thing is that you actually have to own an oil well to run this car because this engine is really thirsty. The second thing that goes against it is that Indian roads are full of speed breakers and this car is slung very low. The CLA is a four-door coupe which Mercedes has designed to ensure that performance is not limited to the puff only but can be shared with the entire family, hence the four doors and the four seats and all the features required to travel in comfort in true luxury car tradition. The only way it differs is that it also delivers hair-raising performance when called to do so. The CLA 45 AMG might not have all the prerequisites of a full-blown luxury car in terms of size or in terms of sheer presence, but what she does have is lots of performance and drop-dead gorgeous looks. I think these are reason enough to own her, but you know what, I can't buy her because she is too blasted expensive. With that kind of money, I can buy some real estate or if I'm a chicken farmer, plenty of chicks. But what the heck, I can always wait. 
And the good news is that if you do wait, you will get the CLA 45 which will cost you much less. Yes, that's true, but in the bargain, it will also lose the ANG tag. You may say that's not a bargain, but I say yes it is. Because you will get a very nice looking car with all the frills in a compact size which will be good for everyday use. And for performance? Oh well, you can always watch the Lewis Hamilton videos. If you are a discerning car enthusiast, then probably you would have no problem figuring out that this car has had a few changes. But if not so, then you will have to take a close look at this one. But the fact is that this is indeed the new Polo which Volkswagen recently launched. The dimensions remain exactly the same, but there has been some cosmetic changes which include a new front end with new lights, new grill and the new air dam. And the rear bumper too is new. But what is very important which that has changed is what lies under the bonnet and that's the engine what really turns me on in a car is a bigger engine and more power and if you happen to be like me then this new engine here in the polo is sure to turn you on too because this engine here has just got bigger this is a 1.5 liter turbo diesel unit which obviously churns out much more power and not only that i'm told she's equally fuel efficient so this seems like a very potent combination. Now it's my turn to jump in behind the wheel and see how she really drives. The changes in this new Polo might not have been very drastic, but it has still added to the car and given it a fresh look. More so with new shades of paint which make it stand out. The main strength of the Polo had always been that it's a rather well-made car and offers enough space with quality interiors. And that really hasn't changed in this new Polo either. Step inside the Polo and you're hard put to find what really has changed. Because honestly, there hasn't been too many changes. The product brochure told me that the upholstery is new. And so it is. And it looks quite good too. And there's a touch of silver garnishing around the center console, which also looks good. But what I really like is the new steering wheel. It has got nice multifunction buttons on it. And it's flat bottom which adds a nice sporty touch. Although the interiors almost remain untouched as far as changes go, but what it offers in the top trim is sufficient for everyday use. It comes with an adjustable steering wheel, comfortable seats with lumbar support, a tuned-in stereo system which can be paired with your phone for Bluetooth and voice prompts. But mind you, the sound system is not offered on the base model, which is strange because a car price in this bracket should be offered with one. But overall, the interiors are well made and pleasant to the eye. But where I feel that the product planners have really gone napping is in little things. For example, the outside rear view mirror here is not retractable. If you want to retract it, you have to do it manually. And that's not really nice considering the fact that these are the first casualties in our bang bang city traffic. Second thing is this bottle holder here. In the door pocket is just not deep enough to hold a one liter bottle. India is a hot country and we do drink a lot of water, but there is no place to keep this one liter bottle. Every time you accelerate the car or you brake hard, the bottle comes tumbling out. And what really gets my goat is this. This window here doesn't have an anti-pinch feature, which means that accidentally you can get your hand or your finger trapped in there. And that's a safety flaw in a car, which is otherwise built very well for safety. As soon as you start driving this car, you realize what a big difference this bigger engine has made to this drivability of the Polo. This is a four-cylinder turbocharged unit which churns out about 90 brake horsepower and 230 newton meters of torque. And as compared to the old one, which was 1.2, churned out about 180 newton meters of torque and a miserly 75 brake horsepower, this is a car which is a pleasure to drive. The power delivery is though not extremely linear, you have to get to the 1500 RPM 
before the power starts flowing in. But once you are there, the power flows linearly and it becomes a joy to drive. Add to this a fuel efficiency figure of over 20 kilometers to a liter according to ARI figures and considering that this is a diesel engine, this will be a really economical car to drive on an everyday basis. The ride and handling is quite sorted out on this car and now actually she rides on 15 inch wheels instead of the 14 inch that the old one had and this has actually added to the stability of this new Polo. The Polo will also be available with a 3 cylinder 1.2 litre petrol engine pumping out 75 brake horsepower. But that engine is the same as the one doing duty earlier. In this diesel we drive the engine is made it to a 5 speed manual gearbox which is a delight to drive with its short throws and the gearing is tall enough to ensure that you don't have to work the box over time. But it is the Air High certified fuel efficiency of 20.14 km to a litre for the diesel which makes it an attractive buy as the power is coupled with good fuel efficiency as well. One of the reasons why I like the Polo so much is the fact that it's really high on safety. Even the base model comes with dual airbags. The one above comes with dual airbags and ABS. And the top frame that I'm driving here comes with ABS, two airbags and traction control as well. And this, I think, is a big plus for owning a Polo. Play with the roads getting somewhat better, the cars getting faster. Owning a car which is high on safety sounds like a good idea to me. The Volkswagen Polo is the only compact car selling in India which comes with a 4-star NCAP safety rating. And it is in this crucial area of safety where most of the manufacturers operating in India have been found lacking. And this obviously is a big plus for both the Volkswagen brand as well as the Polo. So how does the new Polo stack up? Well, in my opinion, the styling changes have made the car a lot more appealing and off-market and I think it's done a lot of good to this car. But at the same time, what I would have liked to see is a few more changes, especially to the inside and addition of some essential features like parking cameras. But the most important thing is that the engine has got bigger and more powerful and this has made the car a whole lot more drivable. The Polo has always been a very practical compact hatch with plenty of space, both for passengers as well as boot. And if you're looking for safety, as I normally do in my cars, then look no further because this is one car which is the safest with dual airbags in the front. The prices for this new Polo starts from Rs 4.99 lakhs for the base petrol variant. While as for the diesel, the base starts at Rs 6.27 lakhs and goes up to Rs 7.37 lakhs for the top Polo TDI variant. However, you can buy a more powerful GT TDI variant in diesel or the GT TSI in petrol for Rs 7.99 lakhs. I'm here once again at the Curry Motor Speedway in Coimbatore for the second round of the JK Tire Championship. After the action-packed first round, the state seems all set for the second round to be as exciting as the first one. And we will have racing in three categories here, starting with the LGB, the entry-level Formula cars, which are powered by Maruti engines. And the second one, the Formula BMW, which are much faster cars. And on this trait here, they do speeds of well over 200 kilometers an hour. And after that, there will be time for some saloon racing in the form of the Polo R Cup. So it seems like we are all set for an action pack day ahead. We are about to see the start of the LGB Formula car race and lined up behind me are the cars sitting on the grid. This is the smallest category of racing that's taking place here. But these are actually the cars where many youngsters get their first taste of racing. They're powered by a 1.3 litre engine which is supplied by Maruti. And the cars though compact and small but yet they are quite fast and agile around corners and provide plenty of action.
It was an overcast day at the Curry Speedway in Coimbatore with chances of rain. And the rain did come thick and fast a few times. But if you thought this will dampen the spirits of the young racers, you would be completely wrong. As in the first race, the round two also saw intense competition and a fierce battle between the main contenders. The entry-level LGB Formula cars, which is the breeding ground for future drivers, was the first to set the pace. And what makes this race exciting is the close competition. Right from the word go, the 22 cars on the grid were busy swapping positions. And it was the corners and the chicanes which provided a lot of opportunity for passing and overtaking. As in the first round, it was the more experienced drivers here who had the edge. And this time it was Sudarshan Rao in car number 2 who took the lead early on in the race and eventually took the podium. With Vishnu Prasad in car number 66 closely following him and Rahul Rangaswamy in car number 999 in third place to complete the podium. Well, the LGB Formula cars provided plenty of action on a wet track, but now it's time for the fastest race of the day. Lining up behind me are the Formula BMW cars. These are the quickest cars here and they easily do speeds of over 200 kilometers on the straight. And there's a surprise in here because sitting in the back of the grid are two very experienced young drivers from India, international drivers, I must say, Arman Ibrahim and Aditya Patel. They're starting at the back of the grid and let's see how they climb up the grid and compete with drivers. But mind you, the drivers who are driving these cars, they are young Indian lads, but they are experienced as well. So we expect plenty of action here. The fastest race of the day was in this category, the Formula BMW, which is actually powered by a small 1.2-litre BMW engine coming from BMW motorcycles. But they built out 140 brake horsepower. This race too had a surprise package. Sitting at the tail end of the grid were two of India's best-known drivers, Arman Ibrahim and Aditya Patel. Their handicap was to start from the back of the grid and the challenge for them was to make their way up and pass the championship contenders. Would they be able to do it? Well, the answer came sooner than expected as they with plenty of international experience and loads of talent soon started making their way past. Arman Ibrahim driving car number 10 was soon in second position and it was Vishnu Prasad in car number 8, another budding driver who had a tough time fending him off. The race was fast and exciting and the position lower down the order changed quite a few times. But up front the battle continued between a seasoned Arman and Aditya and the race leader. Both Arman and Aditya were driving here as guest drivers and not part of the championship and their participation was only to encourage competition and improve the level of driving. Eventually it was Vishnu Prasad who started from the pole position who went on to take the checkered flag. Aditya Patel earlier in the race had a run in with Sandeep Sharma which had forced him off the track. In the championship standing it was Vishnu Prasad who won the race in car number 8 and he was followed by Anand Shanmugam in car number 6 while Nayan Chatterjee in car number 2 finished third. The most exciting race, however, came in the form of saloon cars. The Polo R Cup race is the one to watch out for if you are looking for a close battle. All the drivers are in the identical cars and it is their skills that only separate them. If round one was hard fought, then the races in round two was equally spectacular, with new drivers now pushing hard. Although these cars are almost like the stock Polos, but they are quite nimble around the corners and fast on the straight. The race one of this weekend was a combination of drama on the track as well as some tactical and mature driving from the entire grid. Kartik Tharani in car number 12 started in pole position and retained his top position throughout the race and was followed by Anindit Reddy, Angad Singh Mataru and Anshun Manoj Shast in lap 10. On the 10th lap, Gaurav Mehta's car crashed at the parabola before the last corner. 
causing the race to be red flagged. After the restart, Angad made an early move on Anindit and climbed to position two. Anshul Shah was consistently fourth throughout the race. Due to the race being restarted after lap 10, the race was divided into two parts and for the final results, the aggregate timing of all drivers from both the parts were considered. As a result of this, Anshul Manoj Shah in car number 14 climbed up to second spot, followed by Karminder Pal Singh in car number 17 at the third position, while it was Karthik Tharani in car number 12 who was the eventual winner.